Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live today. It's Saturday, August the 4th, 2012. Our special guests today are David Leslie and Matt Hawley, and our topic for today is Zip Slip, Increasing Parent Engagement. I want to take this moment to welcome you all back. I think some of you are getting ready for the school season, and we've had our break, and we're all refreshed and charged and ready to go. We are very appreciative to have Lori Moffitt with us helping out. Uh, Kim, uh, Peggy and I really appreciate her support as well as Tammy Moore who's in the chat providing closed captioning for those people who might have um, a language uh, difficulty or hearing impairment, impairment. So thank you very much, Tammy, for being with us today. So this is your time to have the fun. Remember I told you to go the, on the whiteboard tools on the left. The second icon down should be a starburst. So if you click on that, drag it over in the world, and tell us where you are. I've got my hand still active, so ignore that one for now. People of the United States, and if you're, that pointer is eluding you, please feel free to type in the chat where you're from. I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario, and Canada. Peggy's in Phoenix. Lori's in central Pennsylvania, San Antonio, Texas for Kim, a few more people, Sue's from Atlanta, Tori and Shirley are from Meridian, Mississippi. So we seem to have North America, the shambles, I'm sorry, you're hidden there in the colors, thank you very much for being with us, it's in Thailand. I find that lots of fun, so thanks very much for participating in the map feature. I want to talk about uh, more resources. I didn't allude to the fact that in the, that page of archives and resources, some of you heard me a few minutes ago, we do have a live binder, which is a wonderful collection of all the resources that we have today. And I think either Peggy, there we go, Kim has dropped the, the actual URL link into the chat. And what's great about this is that you can go back and see our other shows and live uh, Classroom 2.0 live live resources because you will find the copy of the survey and the link to uh, suggesting the featured teachers. So when Tim, Kim talks about that near the end of the session, you're all going to remember that everything is stored for you in the live binder. So we have some poll questions and I talked about them being A to E. Today our first poll question is, what is your role? A superintendent, B district administration, C, principal, the teacher, and some of your others, maybe a parent who's participating today. So I'm going to get, we're waiting for people to vote. That's that little icon, far right, number four, under your uh, name as a participant. So I'm just waiting for the votes to come in. I didn't vote, so I think I can show everybody their results so we can get an idea. Just, sorry, I have to get rid of that hand for a second. So B, we have some in district administration, um, mostly teachers with us today, and the others are typing in. I say we have a, a student. Thank you very much for being with us today. We're looking forward to getting your input in the show as well. So I'm just going to clear the votes and I'm going to go to the next poll question, which is which tool is best for two-way communication with parents? I like the fact that we're asking two-way. A website, parent portal, robo-dialer, email, paper-based documents, or forms. So again, you're going to select A to E. And when I've got about, I think, thirteen. 15 people voting. Again, if you're having difficulty with that voting, just type in the chat your selection. So I'm going to see what the results are for us. So B, parent portal is what people are thinking is the best way for two-way communication, and many people are suggesting email. Perhaps that's what they're finding works best for them. Yes, Peggy, thanks, and social media too. Thank you, clear the votes, and go to our final poll question here, which is how does your school, excuse me, does your school have a social networking plan? Yes, it's clearly defined. B, sort of, it's a Facebook by default. C, not really, but we know we need one, and D, no, we will never allow it. 
So this is going to be interesting to share your results. Go ahead and vote A to D, please. We're leaving the E up, so it's still be a D choice. Okay, I'm going to publish the results. Clearly defined is not one of the choices. Most people are saying it's Facebook, and that's pretty common. Then we have a few more with uh, not really, we don't need one. And a few people, one person has actually said we won't allow it. I think there's going to be a really engaging, interactive discussion about this uh, application. Thank you, everyone, everyone, for participating in the poll questions today. And now it's my opportunity to talk about our guest today. Uh, first of all, uh, David Leslie will be with us today. He's the CEO and co-founder of Zip, uh, Zip Slip. That's kind of an interesting word today, Zip Slip, but that's a great suggestion. Okay, he's from the Washington, D.C. area, and I love the fact that he has four active children. I'm right with you there. Mine are a little older. Uh, school, graduated from the University of California, Berkeley, and part of his probably reason for developing this software, and he's going to share this with me, is that his wife, Chrissy, is preschool teacher. He is the board past interim CEO of the Washington, D.C.-based National Children's Center. You'll find him frequently speaking at conferences. He's senior executive at Fortune 500 and startups and calls himself a serial entrepreneur. So in a minute, uh, David, if you want to add, add something to the intro or bio, please feel free to do that. I'm now going to just talk about Matt for a second. He's the VP of Business Development for ZipSlip. He's based in Dallas, and he's the uncle to lots of school-age children, graduated from Texas A&M University College Station. And I love this. He's blissfully sing single but passionate about education with his uh, lots of school-age children. He's senior manager at Fortune 500 in startups, and he works with David with three other companies. I'd love to hear about that as well. So I'm just going to, again, review that our show today is Zip Slip, our show host, Kim Peggy and myself, and a special guest today are Matt Hawley and David Leslie. And at this point, I am going to turn the microphone over to David as he answers this newbie question. What were some of the issues you discovered about parent engagement that prompted you to create ZipSlip? And you may find, David, that you want to answer that question through your presentation, or you can take the mic in. Um, well, your selection. So welcome very much, David and Matt. We're very pleased to have you with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And uh, Matt knows how dangerous of a question that is to ask to any entrepreneur, especially one that calls himself serial, because we could be here. Uh, you'd be calling in for food and water, and I still wouldn't have answered the question. So um, I'll try to do that very quickly as well as uh, with the uh, presentation. It's a very, very personal experience. Um, a convergence of a knowledge of, of tools like this. So imagine, you know, we're all over the world and we're having this incredible interactive experience online. Um, and so when you have that to juxtapose an experience, uh, really, which was the icing on the cake, um, I'd been at my 34th back to school night um, at the high school uh, level. And I had uh, spent most of it filling out the same piece of paper form that came around in every classroom and then somehow went to a stack to where the a teacher asked me, I asked the teacher, what do you do with all that paper? And uh, you know, they said, not much. Um, but uh, two days after that, it was beginning of the school year, of course, um, the robo dialer called me um, and the computer called me to remind me to not forget to sign my name on the paper forms that my daughter had brought home. And uh, that was just too much of a juxtaposition um, and uh, as a technology sort of guy um, launched into why in the world were our public schools still so dependent on paper? Um, there had to be a good answer, and uh, there was, and, and I, that I would uh, jump in to begin to talk about, uh, to talk about Zipslip. So it was a very direct and personal experience of being fed up with paper and uh, fascinated by why our, our schools were still sort of enslaved to it even in uh, 2010. Um, so uh, should I do the app share now? Is that... Uh, Yes, David. You can go right into app sharing now and begin your presentation. Okay, great. Hopefully this will all 
Okay. Do we see the word agenda and a familiar classroom clock? Seeing it great. Okay. So we won't follow. This is a sort of a, a presentation that we use with uh, customers when we're introducing ourselves. So it's a, mostly a good fit, but uh, apologize for those places where um, we uh, are a little bit out of kilter. But we do want to introduce ourselves. We're very grateful. Um, we hope that we can answer questions that are generally raised by that introduction. Uh, Matt is going to give a live demonstration. You'll see some screenshots in my slides. So that's not the live part. And uh, then uh, if there's time, um, we generally wind up a session with, well, what, what do you do if you like what you see? Um, but let's begin by saying and, and being very, very clear that literally, at least in the United States, um, no one uh, is shopping for our product because it's a brand new category of product. And even though uh, when we tell people we allow them to uh, stop using paper forms like this one and stop sending them home in this rather outmoded uh, form of uh, communications, um, it is still a very tough environment. Um, and so we very routinely find ourselves talking to folks uh, and we understand that quite frankly they, they may feel a little bit like this guy um, in terms of being uh, a, a bit fatigued from the, the promise and the hype of software companies because uh, as an industry we've done that for, for decades. But the good news is um, that we have been successful. And Matt, I'm not sure, I think this may be 10 states now, it's, it's growing pretty rapidly, but um, we hope that when you're done with this that uh, you might feel a little bit more like this young lady um, because we're very happy about the success we've had. And then we've been very fortunate because you have to be open-minded to listen to a vendor try to tell you that uh, there's something you're missing. And so we're grateful uh, for us uh, giving us the chance to, to make our case uh, that there is something we can help you with. So obviously there's a problem that we think you have that you either don't see or, or haven't thought about. And we characterize it like this. There's a tremendous amount of work that educators do today to communicate with parents and we just don't think that you're getting the payback that you deserve from the work that you're putting in. Whether it's from a website, a parent access portal, a message alert system, um, or you know, it, these are all of these systems are essentially what we call post and wonder. Let me give a quick explanation. <laughs> um, data or information that's put on a website or an access portal or certainly in an alert system, it's, it's really posted. That's the proper English term for it. Um, it's, it's put there and people have to go and look at it. They have to somehow motivate themselves and say, you know, I'll go look. If you're the person posting that information, you have almost no way to find out if anyone saw any of your information or heard it or acted on it. And so that's why we call this system that's in use today essentially best described as it's some one where you post and wonder. You post the information and you wonder what happened. Now, of course, in email, um, that's a two-way system. If the person responds, at least there's a way to respond. But inboxes are a miserable way to manage any kind of scalable communications. When you're trying to do one-to-many or many-to-many, -many, it really is a, 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 a tool that gets crossways very quickly which is why when a school district needs to have a true two-way engagement with a parent, look, we need this information, we have to get it back, we have to know that you got it back, we resort to paper. And this is the key primary transmission device for that information. That's too much work. There's too much valuable information that's being put and posted on these sites that's not being seen by parents as a parent. I didn't go to the school website. I have my four kids all have done very well educationally. My wife and I were not helicopter parents, but we're not uninvolved. These tools just weren't important to us. But we did get the paper. So does that mean that we would propose to rethink all of this technology, which has emerged over 10 years, um, and it, to do so would be expensive? Uh, risky and incredibly complex in a traditional sense? And the answer is no. Um, because with today's tools, there are entirely different approaches. Uh, ZipSlip is simply none of the scary things that are rightfully associated with large-scale software. Um, but one of the things that folks have not, you know, in the 
even in the private sector side, what it really means to be a cloud-based app or an online service um, is not really fully understood yet. Um, it is so much more simple. Zipslip is very much more of a, an easy merge with existing systems rather than a stop sign and a rebuild. Um, first of all, it is 100% free. Uh, no one ever pays to use Zipslip. Um, it is a totally different experience, both for the IT department and for the educator. There is no training. Um, we believe that the standard for software today is to be training lists. Think about all of the software. For instance, we're all using this software today, and we may have had a pointer or two, but there was no training. There is nothing to buy and nothing to manage, and there is nothing to replace. And so we very clearly are telling our schools and our districts, we don't want you to start an IT project. We do want you to begin to use a free online service at your own pace, as it feels comfortable to your organization. Software applications are purchased, they're installed, they're managed by IT departments. Zipflip does need a review. Your IT folks have to understand that we are secure, that we are HIPAA and FERPA compliant and COPPA. You have to know where the data is, and there has to be uh, a method selected from the many ways we offer you to exchange information between Zipslip and your student information system, which is a small amount of information and not nearly as frightening as it would sound with typical software. Once your IT folks have done that, it really is about starting small, integrating very easily with your websites, your access portals, your robo-dialers, and you grow naturally. And instead of post and wonder, we propose that you use a system where you engage, which is very, very different than posting. But you've got to think about it that way or else it won't occur to you. And rather than wondering, we want you to know exactly what happened with your communication effort. And so let me go into how it works very quickly. It's very straightforward. We think that all of the information that is requested on school forms um, can still be requested. Uh, it's today it's done on paper and it's sent home in the backpack, we want to take that information, leave the paper behind, and put it into a laptop, a desktop, a tablet, or really most exciting is a smartphone. Um, we love the statistics we get about moms and dads utilizing their smartphone to be engaged with their schools because those smartphones are there all the time and it's such a different paradigm for the concept of communicating with folks. And we just really don't understand how you could propose to be at the cutting edge and very soon it won't be the cutting edge if you're not communicating with your parents with the communication devices they use, then engagement is elusive in our mind. Paper should be taken out of the picture wherever possible. When we launch Zipslip, uh, the parent sign up is typically faster than anything a school has ever seen. We'll be a little frustrated uh, if we don't see 80 or 90 percent in two weeks and uh, the schools sort of say, are you kidding us? I mean, we, <laughs> we've never had anything signed up like this. Zipslip is a completely familiar process. If you've done online banking or Travelocity, I mean, if you've ever created a username and password, then you know how to do Zipslip. We literally see when you reach people via email, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, email is crucial. Um, literally, you will see 70, 80, 90 percent within four weeks of all the families signed up and using Zipslip. Um, you'll see comments coming back. Thank you. We love it. It's about time. I mean, it just is, it's, it's overwhelming, the positive response that comes from this. The first use is also easy because it happens with sign up. Uh, a parent will, uh, after uh, creating their profile, uh, get a text message, um, an email that will say click here, go straight to your dashboard, and literally folks are not only signing up, but they are doing their first online form uh, in these uh, early iterations. And uh, it's literally just taking the pin they created, typing it in, and saying yes, you know, I agree, or no, I don't and uh, sending that back online. Now, when we say we want you to stop wondering and start knowing, um, the reason you use paper is because you have to know that you got the legal consent. You have to know that you got the emergency contact info or whatever it was, the allergy information, or just the acknowledgement of the school handbook. Um, 
So you know whether you got it back on paper or not. You don't know if it was posted on a website or on a portal or something like that. But with Zipslip, you know. You can see immediately um, by going to the dashboard for whatever was sent out, and you will see the parent's responses. And as we uh, just sort of run through that one again, literally you go person by person by person. There's no wondering here at all. There is absolute knowledge of who said yes, who said no, what time of day it was, who it was on a fully authenticated basis. But in order to complete the cycle and to go into the word engage as opposed to posting, because engaging is a two-way process. You, you don't engage with someone if you don't see them and if you don't talk to you know, them. There, you know, there has to be a, a two-way conversation there. Um, this is just one way that parents engage, uh, the red box that's being highlighted there. Um, there are notes and comment opportunities all through Zipslip. Um, so that a parent can say and respond back, and they can do that privately to the teacher, or they can do that in groups. Um, and so the other thing is, by extending this engagement, we have no expectation of the concept of a mandate of a superintendent or a principal saying, thou shalt you know, do this, uh, because that just doesn't work very well for all kinds of very good reasons in uh, public education. Um, but we believe that over time, when you've created a, a connection with a parent that they know is private and secure, is fully two-way, can be engaging, um, then it becomes routine to say, well, do I have to you know, limit this to an emergency contact card? Um, here is literally a screenshot from Lyman High School in Seminole County, Florida. And lest you think, well, gosh, what would we possibly you know, say besides these school forms? This is just one day's worth of stuff. Um, and we propose that all of these things that you see uh, up here are perfect things to be sent to parents, not posted. These need, don't, don't post it and hope they look at it. Send it to the people who are uh, interested. And we do that with what's called a zipgram. A zip slip is very much the concept of a form that needs to be signed and returned back. A zip gram is an information bundle. And it can be about anything. And the subjects we'll begin to see here um, are vast. And they look like this. This is a zip gram. It can have any kind of uh, formatted text. It can include photos. It can include videos. And if I were to have a desire to comment, uh, I can do so. This is an incredibly familiar interface. This looks very much like Facebook. However, dramatically you know, different than Facebook. This is 100% secure. No one is going to see this information nor comment on it who isn't supposed to be there. This is an absolutely safe and secure environment to establish the same kind of community and parental engagement that's done on Facebook, it's done safely inside Zipslip around relevant information that is sent to parents rather than things that are posted uh, for drive-by viewing. Another comment to uh, another opportunity to comment here, every photo, every video has the ability to uh, be shared, commented. And so that's a little bit, Matt will be showing you some things there. He won't be showing you that social networking looking piece there because that's literally uh, out in a, another week or so. But if we take a look about what might be shareable, um, this is a high school we're going to start with in a, a week or so in uh, Virginia. But this art showcase, which I won't go through, <laughs> think of the amount of, of high schools in this country with incredible pieces of art that are just lost on these websites and, and not viewed by the people that there should be. The uh, Spanish department head has made a fantastic YouTube video that's buried on the school website. Um, the senior class has got its own section. This is just one day's worth of information. And when I talk to the folks at this high school and I say, hey, do the parents know everything that's going on? You get rolling eyes. It's like, no, are you kidding me? They don't, they don't see this. This is what we mean by not getting the proper payback. It's a lot of work to post and wonder. If you use ZipSlip, you do the same effort, even actually less effort, because our editor, which creates a ZipGram, is simpler than these tools. You don't post and wonder. You engage and you know. And again, if we think that people aren't interested in communicating, five days ago, I Googled this term, superintendent message. And it came up with 14.8 million results. 
I don't know how many times you've ever gone to page 10 of Google results, but you see that here. You still have nothing but hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of superintendent messages. Think about what public school system do you know where the superintendent doesn't have a message. Then ask that superintendent, how many of your constituents have read that? They'll tell you they have no idea. <laughs> and how many have commented back? Even less. Extend that to the concept of a principal's newsletter. Look at this number of results. It's the exact same thing. This is an incredibly common effort done by virtually every school in the country, and yet they're just posted. They don't know if anybody read them. If you think that they might be text only, if you switch this, percent, switch this to a search for images, five and a half million. So, just as a sort of poster child, and I'll be turning it over to Matt here in just a moment. This is a rural district in Virginia, Louisa County. This is their home page, a very typical small uh, district uh, website for a high school. And if I somehow knew that my child was taking a class from Ms. Raylano, I could find under academic department, I could find her name, and I could click there. And what I do, this is a lovely woman with a lovely story I'm telling about her passion for teaching. It's interesting to note, purely randomly when we found this, that she says, if you don't send in the paper form, you can't do your lab uh, uh, work, your safety contract. I'm not even going to go there. That's the sweet spot of Zipslip. I'm going to go over here to anatomy links, and I'm going to see that Ms. Raylano has not only put in a wonderful introduction page, but now she's using some strange tool where I still want to see the anatomy links. If I've chosen now to go through my third click into this website, I will come up with what is a treasure trove. And if I sent this to everybody, each one of these links is to a different website or video of incredibly interesting information where I as a parent, if I would have known about this and would have watched these things with my child, that is engagement. Um, and especially if I was then able to comment and engage back with Ms. Raylano. So where this actually leads, you know, we all talk about how kids learn today. If you ever get a chance to watch this video, this is this amazing kid. She uses this for a biology lesson, uh, talking about this man who got a bar through his head and was still alive and wasn't even affected. It's a very funny, very informative, engaging uh, tool. And we think that Ms. Raylano, rather than posting that, going to the trouble of posting that, and then wondering if anybody ever made their way through those five links that are buried in that high school website, if she would have used Zipslip and sent a Zipgram with that video in it, she would have been able to go back to that dashboard and seen exactly which of her pa parents and families and students had utilized that information or not. That's engaging and knowing as opposed to posting and wondering. And so Zipslip's really a three-step process. Because no one likes paper forms, you offer it to parents and they sign up faster than they've ever signed up for anything. In fact, one of my favorite things now is that the best use of Zipslip is to promote the use of the parent access portal. Typically, a school says, but I already have an access portal. Why would I use Zipslip? Those districts are now using Zipslip to tell the parents, by the way, please use the access portal. Only now, they don't have to post and wonder if anybody knows about the portal. They can see exactly who got the message or not. So you use the lure of ending the hassle of paper to bring people online. You realize then that they've got a secure connection, which is super easy to use and goes to their smartphone, their tablet, anywhere. And so you evolve to greater information content, which we call Zipgrams. You stop posting, you start sending. Finally, and what we won't have time in, in today, is the notion that there are also groups. We call these zip rings because the parents of the 10th grade chemistry class are automatically a group. The parents of all the kids in the band are automatically a group. The parents of Mrs. Smith's fourth grade class are automatically a group. And when you can build those groups automatically, they can share online the way that you saw. And we just think this is a radically different way to think about using online tools to engage with parents. It's so different than posting on a website or a parent access portal is a two-way process if the parent logs in and if they look. 
but the typical usage rate of a parent access portal is less than 25% uh, across the board. And we just feel like you know, it's perfectly good, but it's limited to grades. And as you can see on the school websites, and on the fact that the robo dialer you know, doesn't call me to tell me about my child's grades, there's a giant amount of information that needs to be shared, so much more than just grades and homework assignments, which those are fine, but they're not the whole story. And so uh, that's the intro. Um, why don't we let Matt get set up, and it's a good time to pause for questions. Hello. Hearing you great, Matt. Go right ahead okay, with your app great. sharing. Hi, everybody. Great to be with you this morning. I'm impressed uh, so many folks joined on a Saturday. Uh, so again, Peggy, thank you for the uh, uh, invitation to join this, uh, this great group. Um, I am, let's see here, trying to get this to come up. Bear with me one minute, please. Okay. Does everybody see um, a user login screen? Yes, seeing it great, Matt. Perfect. Okay, great. Well, terrific. Well, so I'm going to spend uh, roughly the next 15 minutes just walking you through the basic features of the application. Uh, obviously, there is a lot we could share. We just will <laughs> quickly run out of time. Uh, I'm going to show you how information is presented and processed basically for two uh, specific user types. Uh, one, receiving information, which will be the parent, uh, and the other, sending the information, in this example, will be the teacher. Um, although I should note that there are several uh, profile types uh, uh, that would include you know, district administration, campus administration, uh, office staff, teachers, parents, students, and even community members. And each of those different types uh, would have different uh, levels of security, levels of access, and so forth. Uh, but again, we'll just focus uh, on two types uh, for this uh, demonstration this morning. And I'm going to start with the parent. And what you're seeing here is essentially the screen that the parent would come to if they were notified, likely, by text or email. Uh, if, they're, if they're on their desktop, they're going to basically click on the link in the email indicating that the school has information that they need to be aware of, pay attention to, respond to. So they'll click on that and it will come here to this uh, user login page. Now I, I should mention that if they were on a uh, smartphone that um, uh, the smartphone is obviously going to present information to them differently than on the desktop. Uh, but everything that uh, can be done here from the desktop version, can be done from the smartphone or the tablet, uh, just presented to fit uh, the, the real estate, so to speak. So uh, with the login credentials that I'm using, and again, in this case, the parent, uh, the system knows who they are based on that login, and then will present to them initially the schools that their children are a part of. Uh, so in this example, this parent has uh, two children, one in each of these schools. So we'll go ahead and select uh, the one that uh, the notification came from. Um, and then it will bring you to the, uh, this particular family's um, uh, dashboard. And let me explain what is on this dashboard before we get into the details. Um, you'll see this sort of laid out with three major components. Uh, you have the activities that need your response. Uh, this is obviously the most important thing. They need to know exactly what it is the school needs from them. Uh, they don't want to wonder, uh, wonder anymore, did something uh, not make it home? So it's all presented very clearly there. Uh, below that would be the items that perhaps they've already responded to. You can see here there was a, uh, a question about a debate club, and they've already responded yes. So that's why that uh, went down there, or other things that maybe they have looked at, or other things on their schedule that they indicated they wanted to see. The items down the right-hand side of the screen indicate information that is being presented specifically to this particular user. And this information is being presented to them because there's some, rele there's some relevance to the user or to their family. 
Uh, the top message would be an example of a uh, perhaps a video-based message coming from the principal. Could be a welcome back to school. Could be a weekly update, a monthly newsletter uh, that would, in this case, probably go out to all parents, right? So that would show up on this uh, user's desktop as it would show up on everybody's uh, desktop. The next one down um, is a suggestion that perhaps this family has a child in uh, some kind of a science club. And so because the system knows that this family has, you know, they know which children uh, belong to this family, what grades they're in, who the teachers are, what activities they're in, and even the things that the parent has indicated they're interested in learning about, it will match uh, content or information with the profile. So uh, when uh, somebody from the science class or science club says, hey, I want to send this out, it's going to be mapped directly to this user because it's relevant. This would not show up um, on a family's dashboard that maybe didn't have a child in the science club. Um, the third one here that you see is the registration for the SAT test. So again, the assumption with this example would be that that's only going to show up for parents that probably have children in the 10th or 11th grade. If uh, this particular parent's uh, children are all in elementary school, that would not show up. So again, you can map information very directly, multimedia information directly to, to the family. Uh, obviously, with technology, you could, in theory, inundate the family with information that may not be relevant. So we're highly focused on generating and creating uh, very, very relevant uh, information and affording very relevant information to them. Uh, the other thing that, uh, that you could do as a user is uh, opt to look at this information uh, in more of a calendar format. Um, and the first thing you see is my calendar, which would be all of the activities that relate in this particular uh, uh, period, which we're looking at the month of August. Um, so this would relate directly to this particular family. Um, and it's color coded to indicate what kind of event or activity it is. In fact, it may just be a forms packet that they still need to respond to, or perhaps one they've already completed. Uh, or they could look at everything that uh, is going on at the school uh, in that same period. So it presents the information to you in different ways, what, in whatever way that the user again wants to see that. So let me show you now how you respond to specific um, uh, requests from the school. So when the parent looks at this, uh, again, what's presented here in this top section are only the things they need to respond to or have not re yet responded to. Uh, on the left, it indicates uh, with sort of, uh, with, uh, it, it categorizes the type of communication, so that may help them determine what they want to look at. It also indicates what the consent deadline is, uh, and there, it gives you some idea of what kind of a response is needed. In this case, it's asking for a response. In the case of the ZipGram, this doesn't require uh, a response, it's just informational. So I'm going to start with this first one here, the student medical information. Uh, we clearly hit the green respond now button. Uh, that takes us into the first step in uh, the review of this, which is just the basic information. Um, you know what it is, and uh, this is obviously a very simple example. Um, we could uh, move to the next step by clicking yes. Um, this is then going to present uh, the forms, and you see this is a one, two, three step process. You always know where you are in the process of responding. Uh, and this is a simple form. Um, again, medical information, it's asking, uh, does your child suffer from an allergy? And this is uh, a mandatory question, which is denoted by the red star. Uh, if they said no, there are no uh, issues, then they would just enter the PIN and, and move on to the final step. But if they indicated yes, then more questions are being presented. Um, and so the system wants to minimize the amount of work that the parent needs to do or even cluttering up uh, the screen with unnecessary inform information for them to, to respond to or read through. Um, so they could then respond to that. And as you noted, um, noticed here that peanuts showed up as a specific type of allergy. Uh, this is an example of the form um, retaining information that may have been entered in the form previously so that uh, it allows the parent to quickly speed through this if nothing has changed. So to move uh, on to the next step and to basically electronically uh, approve this, the system is asking for a PIN code. Uh, the PIN code is an optional item. Um, uh, by law, the only thing that is required are the original login credentials, a login and a password. Uh, but the school could decide that uh, for specific types of communications or forms that a PIN code will be required as an additional layer of security. Uh, and this is uh, assigned by the parent. They can change that any time they want to uh, to ensure that it is, in fact, uh, secure. Uh, they would type that in, move to the final step. This gives the parent the opportunity to uh, type in a note. This would be the equivalent of a parent 
uh, typing in, or, or rather handwriting in a, a, a note on the back of a form. Uh, so it basically, uh, they, they type this in, and then they can indicate what type of message that it is. It could be an important message, or in this case, the parent has identified this as a medical note, so that it will also uh, be directed to the school nurse and become part of the medical record. Uh, so then we would just click send and respond, and that's it. It's a very simple one, two, three step process. I'm going to just cancel out of that so we don't uh, lose this on the desktop. Uh, but I think you can see how simple this is for parents to use, and this is the reason that uh, we never have questions from parents on how to, how to work through uh, responding to a form. It's very, very intuitive. Um, I'll show you another example of um, responding to, in this case, it's a, a field trip uh, notification. Um, a little more detail, there's embedded uh, images in this, but uh, the person, say the teacher that set this up, could have included video maybe from a past field trip. Uh, and again, the parent's going to follow the one, two, three step process. They said, yes, uh, we'll respond to this. And um, different form, asking for different information. Um, again, type in the PIN code, move to the final step. And in this final step, in this example, uh, the parent has the ability to uh, determine how they want to make payment for this. Uh, in this case, there's a, uh, uh, a need for uh, lunch money to be provided uh, for this field trip. And they can select cash, you know, check, uh, or credit card. If they're sending in cash or check, they would send that in or mail it in with, uh, into the, to the school. Or they could pay by credit card, debit card uh, immediately, and then the system captures that transaction. So that's always maintained. Uh, and then again, uh, the parent can send in a note if there's a need to do that. Uh, and that would be, that note would go to uh, teachers associated with this event, uh, or even chaperones that may be uh, participating. Okay, I want to show you one other thing, and then we will switch over and take a look at uh, the teacher's side of this. And I want to show you a ZipGram. Um, as you can see here, there's a ZipGram presented. This may be like a welcome back uh, from the summer break uh, they could look at. But they also, the system also maintains older messages uh, on all different subjects. Uh, it could really be used for anything, as David was saying. Uh, we'll take a look at one from a past field trip. Uh, and so in this case, the teacher just put a basically a review of what happened, maybe took video from the trip. That's all there. Um, uh, they can embed the, uh, the images right there um, from, uh, from the field trip. And then again, the parent can send a note. This is a private note, which goes directly back to, the, uh, in this case, the sender who would have been the teacher. Um, but as David was showing, in our next release, we're going to have the ability for public notes to be sent uh, and then tracked uh, on the dashboard of the parent where they can see any of the activities that their family would be involved in, any of the um, you know, groups, uh, classes, grades, uh, you know, activities, uh, are going to track um, basically the, um, uh, the news from that uh, in a public way. That can be turned on or off. Uh, should a, a teacher or a school decide they don't want to have public comments uh, permitted. So that's a very quick review of the parent side. Hopefully that uh, is, is clear and it's uh, looking simple. Um, I'm going to log out of this and we're going to log back in as a teacher. Bear with me one second, please. So in this case, the teacher uh, is being presented with all of the activities that they are directly involved with. Uh, they could also, of course, look at all the school-related activities. They could see that again in, the, in a uh, school calendar view. Uh, and in this view, they could see only their events or all the school events. Um, but we'll go back to just this list view. And this is a quick uh, view of everything that's happening, all the things that they have participated in or need to monitor. Uh, the, the student medical information could have been sent out by the school nurse, uh, but the teacher may want to kind of review what the status is. So for their class, it was sent out to all 27, the parents of the 27 uh, students in the class. And they could, uh, the teacher can see that 20 of those parents have responded, um, and they're waiting on response from the last seven. It also shows that notes were, uh, were sent back in, and we can look at that. So she can, uh, here she can drill down in on the specifics of that by just clicking on the activity or the event or the uh, communication out. And it will present uh, the, the teacher with exactly what was sent to the parents. And then uh, that person can look down and see what the status is. So they'll see everybody that this was sent out to. 
uh, those that have, have responded, those that have not yet responded, uh, and then those that have responded uh, you know, with specific notes. Um, so let's come back and look at this. So, um, and actually, um, uh, Lorna asked a question about how do you support uh, families that don't have technology, and this is just one example of this. We, we actually improve the paper experience for families because you can print out pre-populated packets uh, or forms with you know, the uh, family's uh, uh, you know, home address, phone numbers, student name, and all of that. Uh, so that that's already completed even on paper. We do know that, especially with these smartphones, that we're uh, in, in a phase where that's a, a rapidly decreasing percentage of the parents that don't use technology. Uh, but we know that you'll never really uh, get to zero. Um, so we always will support those that are paper-based. Um, for those that are using technology, you can see that. You can actually go in and look at the, at the form itself. Uh, you can see who signed for it, in this case, the parent. Um, and um, uh, so you get a full listing of that. If you wanted to see uh, exactly what uh, the, the responses were to various questions that came in, um, you could actually look at the statistics, which is provided on any enumerated question on any form at all. This is showing in, for this communication there was just one form sent out. It was a medical information form. You can view the stats on that. And then the system is basically going to present uh, all of the detail of that question. This is a fairly simple uh, example of uh, just uh, basically yes/no questions. You could look at this in a you know part uh, uh, graph or pie chart. Uh, if you just click on that, in this case, it's asking, does your child uh, suffer from allergies? These are those that said yes, uh, and then those that said no, and you get exactly who those are. Uh, so any question at all, this could be a comp. You could have multiple uh, answers, um, and it would show all of that. Um, a very simple way of, of getting a quick look at, uh, at responses. Uh, also, um, you can see here that um, um, if you wanted to export that information directly to Excel, you just identify uh, which forms, if again, then, and there could have been multiple forms, and then just hit the export to Excel, and it happens that quickly. It's a very, very simple process. Let's look at another uh, type. Uh, and then I'm going to show you ZipGram, and we'll kind of wrap up and go to Q&A. Um, uh, let's look at a let's look at this field trip as an example. Um, again, it's showing you know those that uh, are attending, those that are not attending here. Um, if the, if the teacher wants to send a note to all the parents, they click uh, send email message to parent. Uh, and then it says uh, quickly, this is to parents of students attending or those that have not yet responded. So if you want to send us an example of a note uh, because you find out that the weather is going to be going to be bad and you want to remind the parents to send uh, the, uh, uh, you know, sweaters or rain, uh, rain gear with the child, uh, that can be very simply done. And I should also point out, and this is important, that when you send out messages, the system will automatically send out reminder texts or emails or both. Uh, until the parent has completed the, the form or what is required of them. Uh, so the system will automatically do that based on how that was set up at the beginning. But in this example, the, uh, the parent can, or rather the teacher, could send out a quick note with some additional information if they chose to. Um, also, you could very simply print a take-along pack. Uh, you can identify which uh, information, which uh, set of forms you want to have summarized or printed in, in whole. Uh, again, in some cases, uh, you may want to send along with the teacher or the, and the chaperones uh, perhaps the emergency contact information or the acknowledgement from the parents. Um, you may not want to send all the individual forms, of course, but you could do that. Or you could send a summarized a version in the event that you want to have paper. Um, uh, or, or, of course, the teacher could access that from uh, a smartphone or, or a tablet as well. Um, let me show you now as sort of a final step, um, and we'll go back to Q&A here in the last few minutes. It's just an example of a, of a ZipGram, kind of how that information is being collected. Um, so again, in this, this instance of a ZipGram, um, at the top here it shows the total number of people that this particular ZipGram was sent out to, and it shows that 81 have viewed it. Uh, again, going back to that concept that David was talking about of send and no. Um, you know now when you send out a newsletter or any form of communication exactly who even viewed that. And then you also know by name who didn't view it. Uh, you can also view uh, which people sent back uh, notes. Um, and so the system helps you know exactly what the status is uh, and there's no uh, uh, wondering um, with, this, uh, with the ZipGram feature. 
So I'm going to pause now and um, um, click this off, and we can go back to uh, Q&A. Okay, great. I took down some questions, and um, one of them was, how do you prevent people from downloading pictures and a zippergram, or, or do you? Um, we, I, I think I can be heard, right? I'm, I'm on? Yes. Uh, there isn't a download um, feature. Uh, from uh, from ZipSlip, of course, uh, screenshots can be uh, captured, and so uh, one of the things that um, uh, anybody that's going to uh, utilize this uh, part of ZipSlip would need to just have an electronic form that was a permission for uh, photos, um, and so that's uh, one of the realities there. And of course, it's interesting because you know the amount of uh, the amount that's going on in Facebook on an unauthorized basis. So school districts have a decision to make about um, sort of the reality of uh, photos uh, in the internet. Um, we think that it's far more uh, rational to uh, have a tool like ZipSlip that lets you get the appropriate releases, um, and then you've got something that's manageable. Because otherwise, you're at the mercy of Facebook, which is uh, um, already Accelerating like a freight train through public education right now in terms of, of photos uh, of children and various activities at schools. Definitely, and I was always forgetting who could be um, pictured and who could not be in the picture, and trying to find that paper, and that was always difficult. And somebody else, can it be um, included in the LDAP with the um, AD and be updated with? Students who um, who are um, new students and students that withdraw. Yes, we uh, we we worked very long and, and very hard to uh, make sure that the uh, fundamentals uh, in terms of working with your existing systems and and then sort of the administrative logistics of a system like this are very much uh, enterprise class. Um, ZipSlip uh, is incredibly easy to use, but it is, uh, you know, Instagram was a toy. Uh, you know, 10 million people downloaded it, but from a software standpoint, it, it's a toy. Um, ZipSlip is a is a full blown uh, application from that perspective. Administratively, it's just remarkably simple to use and deploy. Okay, and can Lorna asked if ZipSlip can be set to full Canadian privacy requirements? Well, I cannot claim to have a knowledge of those. I would, however, be shocked if there was something that uh, we could not do. Um, because essentially, I don't mean to trivialize it, it's quite important, but uh, ZipSlip has lots of ways to ensure that no one sees anything that they're not supposed to see. It's, a, it's very configurable. And so, I would we would uh, love to do a follow up with you and and see if there were any issues. Okay, who creates the electronic pen? The system or an administrator? Um, it depends. You can have the parent create the pen, or the school can assign them and create them for them. However, you'd like. We do not have a pen generator in uh, in ZipSlip. And the fields can be linked to your student information system. Yes, we okay. uh, in the last two districts we've done. Um, I think there were 53 fields that were uh, shared between the two systems. Okay, and you can add in student photos to go with uh, the student profiles. Yes. Okay, and those are the questions that I got. Lori, did you get any that I missed? Yes, I did. I did, okay. Kim. Um, let me go back up to my list. Um, the science class video that was on the side, I think, of the, the parent access, did, did a teacher create that video and then post it to the ZipSlip site? 
Not that particular video, um, but um, so the, the what we're trying to demonstrate there is that irrespective of where it was created, the teacher can post it there with a drag and drop sort of functionality. Um, it's very, very simple. So that's just a demo. And so it okay. can be technically accurate. No, but uh, mm -hmm. if you were to see the one from Eric Scheniger, I think a lot of people know Eric. He's, <laughs> he's the uh, known as principal Twitter. Um, Eric uh, does his own and, and posts them. By, by the way, if anybody, would, if anybody would like to see how that's done, I'd be happy to uh, schedule a private demo and show you how you create this content uh, because it is actually very easy for principals or teachers, uh, any of the any of the staff, to uh, to create the content, create events, uh, and post it themselves if they're given the you know authority from the school or the district to do so. It's very simple to do, so I'd be glad to show you how to do it. Here's another one. Let's say the teacher already has a website for posting homework and messages. Wouldn't they have to post twice using this? Because if this only goes to a parent email, the student will not have access to the parent email. And older students may want to see the necessary info for themselves. So there was part question, part comment in there, I think. Well, um, they're both really good. Um, and. So uh, I'm not sure that we covered. Uh, Zipslip also offers student accounts, um, so students can, in fact, if a if a teacher was uh, looking to um, uh, switch, we don't uh, really propose that a teacher begin to um, stop using a, a parent access portal if they have been using it. Um, we propose that uh, you you keep doing that if if that's working. Um, again, we mean no disrespect, and we, we have no issue with parent access portals. We just comment on what we observe. Um, it's a fairly significantly small minority of districts where that usage is, is consistent. Um, of, of course, any individual teacher can do that remarkably consistently, and that's wonderful when they do. Um, so that's really sort of a tool selection and a process. It is possible to um, share that same info uh, with Zipslip instead of an access portal, um, but uh, we are not trying to replace the access portal. So we would not uh, suggest probably that somebody use Zipslip on that frequency level. If they're posting homework assignments every day and that's working, then they should keep doing that. And use Zipslip for things that are more like Zipgrams. You know, you wouldn't really use a Zipgram to to uh, have a homework posting, unless you wanted mm -hmm. to see who actually, that's the key difference. Uh, Zipslip allows you to see exactly who has looked at what, when, with everything that you send. Um, it's just a really, it, most people, it's sort of a more powerful way to engage as opposed to posting. And one thing to okay. add to that is that um, if there is you know, something that's posted to the portal and you want to make sure parents are paying attention to it, you could send that notification with zip slip and then you know whether anybody's actually uh, paying attention. Um, uh, you have a way of, of delivering it to them. You're pushing out uh, notice of uh, you know, requests that they, that they respond or that they look at something and then you can actually see who, who received and, uh, and responded to that. So they kind of work together in that sense. Okay. I have two questions here that I'm, I'm reading from the chat. The first one, does the calendar allow you to export or import calendars from Google Calendar or, or another calendar application? Um, to export, wait, uh, we can, we, I'm trying to see the question written as well. I thought I could. So uh, it was about uh, Almost at the top of the hour. That helps. One of the, the chat questions or time. One of the things we have not um, addressed is why Zipslip is free, and it is free for everyone, uh, unless you want to utilize the premium feature set, um, which is a grand total of twenty dollars per year for your entire family, and is shared with your school district uh, as well. So parents know that they are literally donating money to the uh, schools when they offer that as well. So um, one of those features uh, takes uh, the school information and exports it to the parents' uh, personal calendars, whether that's Outlook or Gmail. 
um, or a few others, uh, but those are the two main ones by far. Um, so that's the direction from the school to the parent. Um, I'm not sure. Can so was that the direction that the question was uh, was pointed at? The the school to the parents calendars. Yeah. Um, import from Google Calendar. Import from Google Calendar. Um, that would be the the number of variables around that question. I I, I don't think I can answer that. And there are many, many ways that can happen, and so sometimes the answer is yes, and sometimes no. There's mm -hmm. that that one's a little bit too technically specific to uh, give you a okay. blanket answer on. Okay. Another one is: Can an individual teacher sign up for ZipSlip, or does it need to be a school or a district that signs up? Well, now that is a really interesting question. To which, as a as a company, right now, no, the individual teacher cannot sign up. Um, there are certain uh, depends on the uses, if and we're trying to figure out whether that can be uh, if that can work for us. Um, we would love to find a way that that works, but um, it's really not uh, legal for a teacher to decide to replace uh, a legal transaction process, which is you know a, a, a release of a liability form, which is essentially what permission slips are. Um, mm -hmm. It really it doesn't uh, it doesn't work to have an individual teacher make that decision. Um, if they were going to use it purely for zip grams, then you're not doing anything, and and then that would be fine. Mm -hmm. That actually was a question that just came in. What if the teacher just wanted to use the zip sorry use it for zip grams? Um, that's something that you know. Zipgrams have only been in the marketplace since uh, mid-May, and of course, school mm -hmm. went out right after that. So right. we're waiting to see what teachers tell us. We would we would be thrilled if teachers um, were going to utilize ZipSlip in that fashion on an individual basis, because we think that that would help uh, drive usage of our of our software uh, across the country. We'd love to do that. What about forms like IEPs or the equivalent for above average students? Well, there's 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 nothing that exists on paper that can't be done on ZipSlip. So, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of if the question is relating to can you do it, um, the answer is absolutely yes. Um, was does the school authorize you to do that? No, that's a totally different question. Um, we think mm -hmm. it's a great way. There are some software companies out there dedicated to online versions of IEPs because those are so heavily regulated. They're really kind of obsolete by ZipSlip, frankly, because <laughs> they're very expensive, um, and and frankly, they're they're not as good. Um, but uh, that's a, another nuance that um, if the district were looking to do that, the answer would be absolutely yes. Okay, I'm going to okay. go ahead and formally close out the show, and then we'll bring it back to um, David and Matt. And if you have to go, we totally understand. We want to be respectful of everybody's time. And if there are more questions, uh, you can continue to ask those questions and ask about signing up for the pilot programs and, and those types of, of information. We want to let you know that Steve Hargadon will be interviewing um, Lee Rainey on August 7th and on Wednesday the August 8th he'll be talking with a panel on Ed Reform with Alfie Cohn, Gary Stagers, um, Stephen Downs and Howard Gardner and on August 9th he'll be talking with Rudy Crew. And those are always great interviews and sessions. So uh, you'll want to make sure that you uh, allow time for that. The August 8th session is an early session at 11 a.m. Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern. It's not the normal 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. So you want, want to make a note of that. And we're working on some upcoming shows. And we hope that on the survey that you'll give us some great ideas and suggestions and featured teacher information and 
suggest a guest that you would like to see on future shows. And you can do that on the um, featured teacher nomination form. Any educator that uh, works with colleagues or works with students, we would love to have them suggested so that we can have them on our show. And the form is in the live binder. And you can fill that out at any time. And we're always looking for gr great educators and uh, fantastic people to share their information, their knowledge, and the way they do things in the classroom. And you can fill out the form at tinyurl.com slash cr20live, featured teacher, N-O-M-I-N-A-T, and uh, give us some suggestions, as well as putting it in the survey um, that will automatically open in your browser. And any time that you watch any of the videos, you can always request a professional development survey and just type in tinyurl.com slash cr20live survey and request the certificate. Let us know which session you watched and Peggy will take care of that. Uh, so give us some time and she'll get that certificate out to you. We want to let you know we also have the iTunes U collections that you can subscribe to, the video MP4 and the audio MP3 collections. You can open directly your iTunes, the iTunes U channel by going to tinyurl.com slash cr20live iTunes U. That will open it automatically in iTunes U and you can directly access it. You can also use the RSS feed and subscribe that way with any RSS aggregator just below the show archives. Um, either way, you can take us with you wherever you go and re-listen to a session, or if you have to miss a session, you can do it that way. And we want to give a very special thank you to David Leslie and Matt Holly for joining us today, and to Steve Hargadon who's the founder of Classroom 2.0 and just celebrated the fifth year of Classroom2.0.com as well as to Weebly for providing our website and everybody who participated in the show and asked questions and shared their comments and shared their links and ideas as well as to Blackboard. So now we're going to pass it back to David and Matt. And if you have questions, please um, go ahead and continue to type those in the chat. And if you'd like to ask them directly, all you have to do is click on the hand, the raise hand option, and you can use your mic and ask them directly if you'd like to do that. Either way is fine, and uh, we'll be able to get your question answer for you before we let them go and enjoy their Saturday. So if there's questions that we've missed, please take uh, time to ask, ask them. Uh, the recordings will be posted to iTunes U later this weekend um, in the upcoming day, uh, next couple of days, as well as the actual recording through Blackboard will be posted to our website with all of the resources shared, and that will be posted this weekend on our archives and resources page. So um, those that link is posted in the chat for you. And let me go ahead and get the Live Binder link with all of the other resources for you as well so that you can have those things as well. And Peggy has posted the Zip Flip website for you that you can contact David and Matt. And David, did you have a comment that you wanted to uh, make or end up w with? Um, 
Gosh, just that we are incredibly grateful for the opportunity. It's a really neat uh, venue, and uh, we're we're just we're out here working every day because we are inspired by the educators who are trying to to find the way to utilize these tools um, to the best of the uh, benefit of the kids. So um, we're just very very pleased to have participated, and and hope that it was informative, and that uh, and that uh, folks feel like we're going the right direction. Well, we greatly appreciate it. We also greatly appreciate that at the moment that it is a free tool and uh, that you're working hard to keep it free and uh, low cost. I know that there you can get the paid options and share that as well. We appreciate all that you're doing to help educators and make our job easier um, when we are working with our students and parents and our community as well as our administrators. So we greatly appreciate that. Good. Thank you. So thank you so much. And it's great to know that um, um, everybody out there is excited about this tool and that um, they're excited about presenting this to their campus and to see about utilizing this with their teams and their campus administrators. Kim, I want to pop in with a question because I think Shamble Tatton is, is sort of one that was uh, something I was trying to uh, uh, in initiate. And that was a question about whether Zipslip is USA cent centric or does it have a global option to it? Well, um, we do have language um, offerings, but that's been mostly about the uh, the diversity within the United States. Um, we would love to do something internationally. Um, there really is no reason we could not. Um, so, if any of the audience would like to follow up with us, um, we we would love to explore that. There, there are no technical reasons, there are no product issues of, of why it would be limited. But as a new company, no, we have not um, initiated any kind of marketing uh, outreach outside of the United States. And, and we've done a little bit in Canada. Um, but that's that's really it so far. Yeah, I'd like I to will, sorry, I will say go ahead. That, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just going to mention that we have had quite a few uh, inquiries uh, very recently about that. Uh, we're working right now with a group in the UK, another in Canada, and another one in uh, Australia. So. That's great. Um, that's, that's great. A, that's starting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And again for your presentation. Excellent. Since it is browser based, um, yeah, the browser should interpret if there were any language issues. Um, they're really they're for the not most that part. It's an interesting the the language question. Of course, if the 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 information is created in the native language, I mean that's you know if you're getting into some of the mm -hmm. uh, different character set uh, languages, then right. that's a right. that's now you're that's getting a whole into a, another issue. Yeah, right. And and again, there gosh, there are countless ways to skin those cats, and and they're actually getting mm -hmm. easier and easier. Um, we, however, are dependent upon sort of industry standard mechanisms to do that. We have not had the ability to invest in, you know, a particular character set. We, we would love to be that big one day soon, but uh, that's not part of our reality right now. Um, but there are interesting ways to make it quite usable. Um, we think, but uh, it would take exploration. Well, again, thank you so much for taking your time out of your Saturday. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today during the live session as well as the recorded session. Be sure to sign up on the website so you can get access to all of their information and keep up to date with their progress and their updates and their zip grams. And we look forward to everything that you're doing. And please suggest in some featured teachers and topics and guests that you'd like to see in the future as we continue to plan. We have some things in the works coming up. And we would love to feature some of your ideas as well for future shows. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Have a great Saturday and a great weekend, everybody. See you next week at the same time, same place, and we will 
Um, see you then and see you online. Take care, everyone.